So in the previous video, I told you that genetic variation and environment can affect the phenotype of the organisms within the same species. So what we're going to be looking at over here is genetic variation. By definition, genetic variation just means differences in DNA base sequence within a species. As an example, I'm just showing you a chromosome and the line there, which represents the gene for fur color, just as an example. And the gene has two alleles, large B, dominant allele, small b, recessive allele. In the previous chapter, I told you that alleles will have slightly different base sequences, as I've represented over here in the highlighted part. You can appreciate that the large B allele and small B allele are quite similar, except one of the base pairs, where large B has CG and small B has TA. Do not memorize this. This is just my example. Now, the point I'm just trying to make here is the large B allele and small B allele, the DNA base sequences are slightly different. So if we have three otters over here, and all three otters have a genotype of large B, large B, small B, small B, and large B, small B, we can assume that all these three otters have slightly different base sequences from each other. So for our level, we can assume that different genotypes equals genetic variation. It's not the best definition of genetic variation, but it's okay. It serves the purpose for this chapter. Now, more importantly, what you have to know is the causes of genetic variation. So what allows genetic variation to be produced? How are you able to get so many different combinations of alleles? There are five causes of genetic variation, but I'm listing out four. The first four causes of genetic variation will be independent assortment, crossover, random fusion of gametes, and random mating. And if you had seen the playlist on chapter 16, you would know that, hey, we have done this before. Uh, we have talked about independent assortment and crossover when we were discussing meiosis in chapter 16. So let's see how all four of them are able to produce genetic variation within the organisms. In my example over here, you have a male organism with a genotype of large A, small a, large D, small d. Female organism, to keep things simple, I'm going to make them genetically similar, large A, small a, large D, small d. And the A gene and the D genes are unlinked because they are on different chromosomes. So, due to independent assortment, I told you that the organism can produce large A, large D, large A, small D gametes, small A, large D gametes, and small A, small D gametes. If you're not so sure how they produce these gametes, due to independent assortment, I'm going to put a link on the top right corner so that you can refer to that video on chapter 16. Another very important thing that happens is the random fusion of gametes. As an example, if you see the male gamete, large A, large D, it has a chance of either fusing with large A, large D gametes from the female, large A, small D gametes, small A, large D gametes, and small A, small D gametes. We are not 100% sure which gametes will fuse with each other. That means that there is an element of unpredictability or randomness when it comes to the fusion of these gametes. So as an example, let's say that these two gametes fuse with each other and they produce a genotype of the offspring that is large A, large A, large A, large A, large D, small d. Look at the offspring's genotype. Is it exactly the same as the parents? No, it's not. Because the parents had a genotype of large A, small a, large D, small d, but the offspring's genotype is different, which means to say that the offspring has genetic variation. It is genetically different from the parents because of the process of independent assortment and random fusion of gametes. In another example here, let's say that the genes are linked, which means to say that they are on the same chromosome. In this case, both the male and female organisms are genetically identical, large B, large E in one chromosome, small b, small e in one chromosome, 
And remember, during meiosis, the DNA will replicate first to form sister chromatids, and if crossover happens, the chromatids of the homologous chromosomes will overlap. There will be exchange of genetic information between the two chromatids, and they will be able to produce these types of gametes. Large B, large E, small B, large E, and you see, because normally large B and large E have to be together, small B, small E have to be together. But due to crossover over here, the small B and large E are now together. They have swapped places. Then you've also, you are also getting large B, small E due to crossover and small B, small E. That's normal. So let's say that from the male organism, the gamete is large B, small E. And from the female organism, we put small B, small E. And when those gametes randomly fuse, Look at the offspring's genotype. Is it exactly the same as the parents? Large B, small e, small b, small e. No, it's not. It's slightly different from the parents. That is also genetic variation like that. Another thing that can also produce genetic variation in the offsprings will be a concept known as random mating. Don't have to go into the detail of this because I will elaborate on that later. But as an example here, you have three organisms, one female in the middle and two males on either sides with different genotypes. You see, the male on the left might be able to produce a gamete that is large A, large B. The female will produce a gamete that is small A, small B. Now, the male on the right can produce four different types of gametes, large A, large B, large A, small B, small A, large B, and small A, small B. But for the sake of simplicity, let's just say that the male only produces the small a large b gamete. You see, the female organism has a chance of either reproducing with the male on the left or it will reproduce with the male on the right. If this were plants, we will not be 100% sure where which organisms will reproduce with each other. If the female reproduces with the male on the left, it may get a large a small a large b small b and in that case, it's genetically different as well. And if it reproduces with the male on the right, it might get small a, small a, large b, small b. So that's how random mating can also produce genetic variation right there. Now, if you're still not so sure how they all work together, let's try again. In my example here, you have three otters, and I want you to see the genotype of all the three otters. The male on the left is large A, small A, large B, small B, large D, small D. And I want you to notice that the A and B genes are on the same chromosome, but the D gene is on a different chromosome, okay? The female, small A, small A, small B, small B, just to make it a bit more complicated. And the male on the right is large A, small A, large B, small B, large D, small D. It's heterozygous. Now, in this example, let's say the male organism on the left undergoes independent assortment. If it undergoes independent assortment during the gamete production, it will produce gametes which are as follows. And as I've highlighted, this is just to show you how the chromosomes will separate during independent assortment. And then let's say the male on the right here, it did not do independent assortment. It dis the cell decided to do crossover during meiosis. Okay, so in this case, what happens is during crossover, we notice that the chromatids will change places and that's how they'll give those different combinations right there. And the female will only produce small a, small b, large d gametes, no matter what. So crossover and independent assortment, the point is they will produce genetically different gametes. That's good. Now, the next part is random mating. The female has a chance of either reproducing with the male on the left or reproducing with the male on the right. In my example, let's just say that the mating happens between the female and the male on the right. And then when we talk about the gametes, we notice that this female gamete has an equal chance of either fusing with that gamete or that gamete. Do we know for sure which gametes will fuse with each other? No, we don't. That's what is called as random mating. So let's say these two gametes fuse with each other randomly. And what happens is you get an offspring. And look at the offspring's genetic information, the alleles. Small a, small a, large b, small b, large d, large d. 
So in this case, this organism over here shows genetic variation because it's not exactly the same as the parents in the previous generation, correct? A very important thing I want you to understand is random mating, independent assortment, random fusion of gametes and crossover, what they just do is they merely reshuffle the alleles. Now, what do I mean by they merely reshuffle the alleles? If you can see these organisms over here, as an example, let's say these two heterozygous organisms, they are both heterozygous, they reproduce with each other, produce the first generation, which produces the second generation, which produces the third generation of offsprings. If you look at the offspring's possible genotypes, I'm just listing them out in different colors. Are all the offsprings genetically identical? No, they are not. They are all genetically different. As you can see there, they all have slightly different alphabet combinations. But what I mean by they are merely reshuffling the alleles is the fact that only large A, small A, large B, small B, and large D, small D alleles are passed down and combined in many different ways. That's what reshuffling of alleles mean. Because if you look at this third generation of offsprings, all the offsprings, all the alleles are just either large A, small A, large B, small B, and large D, and small D. Because those are the alleles that the original generation also had as well. So you will also see those same alphabets or those same alleles in the future generation. Do you see any of the otters here with, I don't know, a new allele like large E or a small E or a large T, small T? No, you don't. Whatever alleles the parents have are the alleles that will be passed down to the future generations. Only thing is it's reshuffled or recombined in many different ways due to independent assortment, crossover, random mating, and random fusion of gametes. So the question is, how exactly do new alleles appear? That's where we have to talk about the fifth cause of genetic variation. And the fifth cause of genetic variation is mutation. Okay, Mutation, I've told you before in chapter 6 AS and also in the previous chapter uh, 16 that we covered, um, mutation is just a random change that happens in the base sequence of the G. All right, let's take an otter here. This is a situation. This otter has a genotype of large B, large B. All right, so when it produces gametes, it can only produce a gamete that is large B, and the other otter can also produce large B gametes. So when they fuse, they give you another offspring that is large B, large B. So there's no genetic variation in this case. Fine. But what may happen is within the otter, the otter may undergo a mutation. Now, I want you to be very careful here because we have to be very specific to what type of cell undergoes mutation. You see, the otter has many cells, or the organism has many cells in the body. They can have somatic cells, for example, skin cells, or they can also have another type of cell known as a germ cell. Now, you don't need to memorize the meaning of the term germ cell, but what you need to know is the germ cell is a cell that undergoes meiosis. So the germ cell is the one that is needed to produce gametes. You see, if the skin cell of the otter undergoes mutation, yes, let's just say it undergoes mutation, from large B, large B, the allele, one of the allele randomly changes to become small b. So it's a recessive allele that happens due to mutation. Even though the mutation happens in the skin cell, that mutation cannot be passed down to the next generation because the skin cells do not become gametes. The skin cells are just you know, skin cells. But the germ cell, if it undergoes mutation, it becomes, for example, large B, small b. That mutation can be passed down to the next generation. So when the cell undergoes meiosis, in this case, it will produce a large B gamete and a small b gamete. In this situation over here, all you just have to say is another cause of genetic variation is mutation of cells that form gametes and mutation creates a new allele. That is the interesting thing about mutation that can sometimes happen as well. 
And because of this new allele, it can create new phenotypes as well. Let's just see how they play out. Okay. So in this case here, we have two otters with genotype of large B, large B. But one of the otter, the cell that is undergoing meiosis, undergoes mutation. And therefore, it creates a new allele where the gamete will have large B and also small B. But the otter on the right side, it did not undergo mutation, so it only has the large B allele in the gamete. So, in this case, if the that two large B and large B gametes fuse, you'll get another otter that is large B, large B. But if that mutated gamete fuses with the large B gamete, you will get an otter or an organism that is large B, small B. So, look at this otter over here and compare them to the parents. The parents were both large B, large B, and large B, large B. But the otter over here, one of the offspring is large B, small B. That is how genetic variation can happen. Did this genetic variation happen due to um, independent assortment or crossover or random fusion of gametes or random mating? No. This genetic variation was only possible due to a process known as mutation. So that's what we have to understand for this one right here. So that is how mutation is also able to create genetic variation in the offsprings as well. So these are the five causes of genetic variation that you must know for your A-levels.